Hi, my name is Scott Ambler. I'm one of the authors of Dispenage Delivery from IBM Press. My other co-author is Mark Lines of UpMentors. The tip I'd like to share with you now is that Dispenage Delivery is enterprise aware. So what does that mean? Um, there's several important aspects of enterprise awareness. Um, the first is the, you know, because uh, the dispenage delivery process framework adopts lean concepts all the way through it, um, and one of those, a very common lean concept is to optimize the whole, to, to look at the bigger picture. So we shouldn't be trying to optimize the way that an individual team works, or we shouldn't be op trying to optimize um, one small aspect of the overall process, but we should be looking at the overall process and more importantly, the overall organization. So um, to optimize the whole when you're on a team, you should be doing things, basic things like following corporate conventions. Are you, are you following common coding conventions? Are you following... Uh, data conventions, uh, user interface guidelines, are you, um, you know, conforming to standard architecture principles within your organization? Um, are you, you know, a second aspect is, are you, are you leveraging and uh, enhancing the, the overall organizational ecosystem? So there's an existing infrastructure in place. So are you using it? Are you, are you not um, adding new technologies and you know, new database technologies and new new you know, application servers into the into the hardware mix or into this into the um, software mix um, simply because you want to play with some new toys. Um, you know, many organizations already have the fundamental technologies in place that they need. So why not continue using them? And why not making why not make them better? So instead of creating a new database, you know, why not use existing existing corporate data? And you know, yes, you might have to refactor it to clean it up a bit, but um, making that investment in the overall um, environment is probably a good thing. Um, another aspect of optimizing the whole is, are you sharing your learning? So a very good aspect of agile software development in general is that um, teams try to improve as they go. They try to learn more about the domain. They try to learn more about the technologies they're working with. And they try to get better at the software process that they're following to tailor the process to meet their needs. And that's a very good thing. But um, should you not share your learning? So, for example, if your team um, finds out that you know uh, adopting practices around continuous deployment is a good idea, well, you know, does it make sense for the other teams in your organization to also have to, you know, struggle through to figure that out on their own? Or could you not share that with them and, and you know, help help them along? Maybe do some mentoring and some coaching to, to help them uh, pick up these, these new techniques. And finally, um, there's this recognition that you have to interact with some potentially non-agile teams. So, for example, you know, you should be working closely with your data management group to make sure that you're, you know, you're leveraging existing corporate data. Um, but they might not work in an agile manner or, or they might not be perfectly agile yet. So you might have to change the way that you work to, to reflect their the way that they work and vice versa. You might end up um, doing some coaching and mentoring of the data team to to help them improve their, uh, you know, up, to, up their game. Um, similarly, you might be working with the enterprise architects, um, you know, to, to leverage the existing infrastructure. And as a result, um, you know, they might have to you know, change, you know, become more agile. Um, maybe you've got an existing governance approach that isn't quite as good as it could be. Um, you know, more on that in a minute. Um, you know, or your QA team. So there's this these other teams in your organization that you can't, you shouldn't be ignoring. You you, you can't ignore them. And um, you really do need to work with them closely and effectively. And um, that might mean you need to change the, the way that you work. That might mean that, might mean that they need to change the way that they work, but you're gonna have to figure it out together. Um, so this is part of being a, you know, a mature agile team. Another aspect of enterprise awareness is governance. So you know, we've baked governance right into the overall, into the overall process framework because the reality is, you know, like it or not, your teams are being governed. And um, I prefer to be governed effectively. And I think you should prefer that too. So good governance should enhance your development activities, should make it easier for you to get your job done. And uh, the good news is that agile teams are significantly easier to govern than traditional teams. And it's because of this, um, of this greater visibility that we provide to stakeholders. Um, we also provide um, more opportunities for them to be actively involved and to steer the project. So there's a, a, a bunch of uh, practices that are baked right into agile that are um, you know, very common in the agile canon, things like active stakeholder participation, um, producing a potentially consumable solution or reiteration. Um, in, in Scrum, they talk about um, having potentially shippable software. Um, but in, in Dispin Agile Delivery, because we're enterprise aware, because we understand that, you know, because we're looking at the bigger picture, we realize that, yes, we're working on software, but that software runs on hardware. 
that um, you know we we are producing document supporting documentation for the system. We are producing. We are often changing the business process around the usage of the solution. We are often change sometimes even changing the organization structure around the usage of the system. So you know, we need to be looking at the bigger picture. Um, we need to be talking about solutions and not just software. So it's a one another aspect of the of the discipline that we see in in uh, in the DAD process framework. Um, and there's you know iteration demos and all hands demos, um, automated metrics gathering, uh, automated project dashboards. There's a, a bunch of opportunities um, in the, in um, that are you know, very common in the agile community that make it a heck of a lot easier to govern the agile team. So um, this I think is a, a very good and refreshing thing that many organizations can benefit from. Uh, a third aspect of discipline agile delivery is uh, it has DevOps baked baked right into the process. So the basic idea with DevOps is that it's this observation, and it's very similar to optimizing the whole, that um, the, the IT environment is actually um, has many aspects to it. You know, we have some development teams, but uh, more importantly, that the vast majority of IT spend is almost always on the operations side. So, you know, two thirds to 80, even sometimes 90 percent of an IT budget actually goes to operating, maintaining, and supporting existing solutions and not to new, to new development. Um, so that begs the observation that you know, maybe these development operations teams, particularly the development teams, should be working a little more effectively with the operations folks and trying to streamline the overall process and maybe, uh, you know, maybe uh, freeing up some money for development. So in dis disponential delivery, we, we've done our best to, um, to show how to address DevOps type issues throughout the entire life cycle. So um, during inception at the beginning of the project, um, we, you know, we, we, our advice is that, you know, first of all, recognize that operations and support people are very important. Um, stakeholders of your project, you should work with closely, but you should be working with them very closely from the very beginning. So you should be doing some initial requirements and visioning with them to understand what their needs are. Um, you should be under, you should understand what, um, you know, what infrastructure you have available to you, what conventions are in place, are in place and so on. So that way you can leverage them, um, uh, you should be, you know, your planning should reflect um, the realities of trying to release in your production. So you should be thinking about, you know, what your release windows are and how much effort it's going to be to, to actually release in your production. Find out what procedures you need to follow uh, to be successful at that. Um, throughout construction, you should be working with them closely. Um, you should be doing continuous integration, maybe even continuous deployment, um, writing continuous documentation. So. Um, like I was saying earlier, the part of the solution is to not only write software, but you should also be writing high quality documentation as well. So, and some of that deliverable documentation will be for your support and your operations people. So for something to be potentially shippable or potentially consumable, um, your solution not only, not only should you be worrying about potentially shippable software, but you should also have potentially shippable documentation as well. So once again, you got to look at the full solution, not just the sexy software stuff. Um, and then finally, during transition or release or the end game, you know, whatever, whatever it is you want to call that, um, that aspect of your project, um, you're still going to be doing a little bit of planning with your operations support people. Somebody's going to sign off on the fact that, you know, whatever it is you've produced is production ready and that, you know, it's potentially, you know, that is, it, it, it is in fact ready to be shipped. Um, you might have to do some training. You'll probably still have to do a little bit of end of life cycle testing, even if that is something as simple as just rerunning your regression test suite to, sh to make sure that everything still works. Well, it takes a bit of time and you got to do it. So, um, you know, this, this, this sort of basic fundamental stuff is baked right in to dispatch delivery. So that way um, you don't have to think, uh, you don't have to figure out yourself, how is it, you know, how is it we're going to work closely with the operations people? How do we, how do we get the job done? So, um, you know, a little less consultant wear, I guess you could say when you're, when you're looking at disposable delivery. So I suspect, uh, I suspect you're going to like the book.